right now on 5 on Your Side at 10. Brief break. The overnight hours are quiet, but rounds of strong to severe storms return Wednesday. We're tracking the threats those storms bring and how they move through your neighborhood. Tomorrow's tornado threat stirring up emotions of past storms. Every time you hear the siren or you hear that it's coming, I go back to that night. The mother turning her fear and grief into change. Two 16-year-olds accused in a burglary spree and firing shots at police. Tonight, the efforts to change the tide in a teen crime wave. We start tonight in storm alert. It is all calm right now for most of the bi-state after early morning storms spawn tornadoes and tomorrow will bring even more turbulence in the atmosphere. We're talking about the chance for damaging winds, hail and more tornadoes. Good evening everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson and I'm Mike Bush. We're in enhanced risk for impactful severe weather tomorrow and it could come in a couple of rounds. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is tracking the development and timing in our weather first forecast. You know, this morning when we were tracking those thunderstorms, it was basically one big line of thunderstorms that came through, did what it was going to do, and then moved out. As we go into tomorrow, it's more of waves of thunderstorms. Quiet out there right now. Here's a look out at Lambert. Yeah, there's some aircraft that aren't at the gate right now that normally would be. Keep in mind, if you're flying the next couple of days, we're not alone in our severe weather woes, and that means there's a lot of flight delays and a lot of travel delays. Wednesday is a storm alert day. We're talking about waves and numerous thunderstorms across the region, some strong to severe. The timing on this 11 until 9, 11 in the morning until 9 at night. That's a pretty long window of opportunity here with the threats being Gusty winds, 60 to 70 miles per hour, large hail, perhaps larger than golf balls, and then maybe some tornadoes as well. Tonight, the tornadoes have all been off to our east. Lots of tornado warnings, several of them through Ohio, Indiana, even in the Louisville area. Back to the west, things are fairly quiet right now, and we'll stay quiet overnight. As we head into tomorrow, though, thunderstorms develop during the morning over mid-Missouri, move towards the St. Louis area. Through the day, we'll have a few waves of these showers and thunderstorms. Some of the storms will produce severe weather across our region. So here's the lowdown. The stormy pattern continues through Wednesday. It is quiet overnight, so get a good night's sleep tonight. But be prepared walking out the door tomorrow morning to face a couple of rounds of storms. The first one around lunchtime, the second most likely late afternoon, early evening. We're talking four, five, six o'clock in St. Louis and the potential for these to be more intense and more widespread than what we have seen. Kelly. All right, Scott. And tonight, the National Weather Service confirms three tornadoes hit Franklin and Crawford counties early this morning. This includes an EF1 tornado that destroyed a bar in Sullivan. The twister with winds of 100 miles per hour hit one more pub and grub around four this morning. There were no reports of injuries. The tornado also caused some damage at nearby Sullivan High School. Students did show up today as usual. And before getting to the by state, that same storm system caused widespread damage in Joplin. The National Weather Service confirms an EF1 tornado caused damage to several homes and businesses late last night. The storm also caused several gas line breaks. So far, there have been no reports of any serious injuries. It's been two and a half years since an EF3 tornado hit an Amazon warehouse in Edwardsville, killing six people. Tonight, with the threat for more tornadoes in our area in a matter of hours, families who have been impacted by storms are concerned. And Laura Barcheski continues our storm alert team coverage. She spoke with the task force aimed at improving workplace disaster safety, safety in Illinois. Mike and Kelly, the Warehouse Safety Standards Task Force says they've been making a lot of progress in hopes of making some big changes. But what won't change for one family is the fear that builds every time severe weather hits. Every time you hear the siren or you hear that it's coming, I go back to that night. Carla Cope says she had her son Clay when she was 29 years old on a Friday in December. He was taken from this world at the same age on a different Friday in December when an EF3 tornado ripped through the Edwardsville Amazon warehouse where he worked. Is when we got the OSHA report back from two and a half years ago, um, they met all the minimum requirements. So six people that lost their lives, minimum requirements are not enough. She's now part of the state task force with Representative Katie Stewart. They've been working to change building requirements and protocols one meeting at a time ever since the tragedy. Well, we're hoping that maybe that can ha have a, an impact too, that it can change the way they're building these buildings on top of 
you know, trying to put in this, the, the protections and the uh, requirements to make them safe. In addition to recommendations for new buildings, the task force is also exploring how those currently standing can meet the same safety requirements. Stewart says that warehouse, even though it's been rebuilt, has been practically empty ever since. It's not a massive expense um, to get it up to what might be a new code that we put in place. So there would be ways to retrofit, you know, existing ones and put the safe, safe locations in there. Cope says she wants everyone to be more aware during tornado watches and go over safety plans at work and at home as these storms only grow more severe year after year. I know as a kid we didn't take it seriously. I mean a lot of times if there was a tornado coming we ran outside to see it. You know I mean we never really expected it to hit anything or hurt anyone but um, I, th I think that it needs to be I think they need to be feared more now than they ever were. An Amazon spokesperson tells us they do intend to reopen that warehouse saying, quote, we have comprehensive emergency preparedness protocols and safety measures in place and continuously review them for opportunities to improve. The task force hopes to present their recommendations to the state legislature by the beginning of next year at the latest. Reporting live in St. Louis, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. And you'll, you'll want to make sure you're getting the proper warnings tomorrow. The Weather First Team will guide you through the storm threat with updates on air, online at KSDK.com and the Five on Your Side app. Our meteorologists will also be streaming on Five Plus. You can also text the word weather to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you the very latest forecast to your phone. New tonight, two people are dead after a deadly crash in Chesterfield. The two car wreck shut down South Woods Mill Road near Brooking Park Drive for several hours this afternoon. We're told a man and a woman in each car were killed. Their identities have not yet been released. The cause of this crash remains under investigation. Tonight, St. Louis police are investigating a deadly hit and run crash. It happened at around five tonight on Chippewa, just east of South Kings Highway. Five on your side's Brent Solomon is live near the scene. Yeah, we learned within just the past 15 minutes that that male pedestrian lost his life right here where I'm standing. In fact, people who live in this neighborhood tell me they are saddened, but not surprised. That's because, as you can see, traffic here flows on Chippewa all day long. There is a crosswalk where the road intersects with Ridgewood Avenue. And neighbors tell me they want drivers to be more mindful of pedestrians. Let's go ahead and take you right to that crime scene. It was around five this afternoon. Our cameras rolling here on Chippewa, not far from Kings Highway in South City. We're not. Uh, I can tell you that that uh, pedestrian was a man. We don't know his age or his identity. Police tell us that person was just trying to cross the street when the driver struck him and decided to keep going. Tonight, I caught up with a neighbor who lives near the scene. She's not only reacting to the news of this fatal crash, she also wanted me to know what traffic is like usually on this busy stretch of road. Crazy. And all night, all you hear are sirens. So it's like police, fire, ambulance all day, every day. Yeah. That's horrific. They didn't stop for the person, like, didn't care to see if the person was okay, mm. and they just kept going. That could have been one of our family members. All right, let's take you back alive now. You can see that this section of Chippewa is a community that is a mix of homes and businesses. As police work to identify the driver and the car that the person was in, We'll await word on whether there are any security cameras in this area that may have captured a clue that will help find that hit and run driver tonight. We'll keep you posted. Live in South City, Brent Solomon, five on your side. We have learned a woman killed in a crash in Kirkwood was an assistant principal at Confluence Academy in South City. The school posted a video tribute to Sarah Howell on its Facebook page today. The 45-year-old was killed Saturday night when a car crashed into her car at the intersection of Geyer and Big Bend Roads. No one else was hurt. St. Louis County plans to make several improvements to that intersection to make it safer. Tonight, two boys, just 16-year-olds, are in custody, accused in a crime spree 
and firing gunshots at St. Louis County police officers. Our Robert Townsend is here with new information on last night's chaotic scene in a North City neighborhood. Robert. Mike and Kelly, the ongoing teen crime wave in St. Louis is not letting up. Investigators say this latest incident happened in the city, but county police were tracking a stolen car when they say the two teens opened fire on them. One minute, Ruby Keefler says she was sitting on her porch, but then out of the blue. The police is flying up and down the street. She saw St. Louis County and city police officers descend on her neighborhood. And my husband came out and he heard gunshots. Investigators say around 5 Monday afternoon, county police were tracking this stolen Audi. Believed to be used in several uh, car break-ins and potentially business burglaries in St. Louis County. Investigators tell us initially the driver wouldn't stop. The vehicle fled, uh, they initiated a pursuit, the vehicle was spiked, stopped here at this location. In a neighbor's yard near Acme and Lena Avenues, police say during the pursuit, at least one St. Louis County police officer and two 16-year-olds exchanged gunshots. Officers quickly arrested one of the boys at the scene. They caught the other teen a few blocks away. No officers, no individuals were injured. I'm glad they're not hurt, to tell you the truth. It, it's just ridiculous. I'm stunned by it, and I think that those are violent offenses and those individuals need to be confined. Longtime criminal defense attorney Gerald Christmas represents minors and adults. You have to take them off the street because you have to sit them down for a minute and make them understand the serious nature of the crime. And then we have to start figuring out what we need to do to work with them in order to make them better citizens. Meanwhile, Joel Courier, a spokesman for the 22nd Judicial Court, says, among other things, the Juvenile Division's many intensive programs are designed to enhance community safety, provide youth with counseling and or treatment as needed, and encourage personal development. Police say they also recovered several guns after arresting those two teens. It's the latest crumble on 